But in talking, you know, just we were talking about TV and TV rights and how it's headed and where it's headed. And uh, and the conversation came up of watch hours and inexpensive programming for networks to produce. And it just went into this conversation about, you know, hey, by the way, I heard some rumblings. There may be another AEW show coming. And I'm, I'm for anonymity reasons for this person, I'm, I'm going to I'm not going to dive deep into everything that was said. Right. But here's here's pretty much what was said. Inexpensive content matters, especially in, in television. And if you have a property that's hot, that's getting, uh, you know, you, you talk about AW ratings constantly. Everybody's obsessing over this 830,000, 890,000, 900,000. But that's a very high number. You know, uh, uh, wrestling fans, we're, we're stuck on this attitude era level of number that represents a good viewership. It, you're, we're never going back to that. Uh, you know, listen, if, if WWE could do 5 million viewers on a Raw, that is astronomical numbers. That is on the level of major sport brands. It's just something that doesn't happen anymore. But we have seen the numbers go up incrementally. I think for AEW, they are, they are doing very good with their viewership. Could they do better? Absolutely. If they're sitting in the, in the million range, that's very healthy for them. And that's a positive for them. And Warner knows this. Warner knows what they're capable of. Warner knows the value of the property. And, you know, Rampage was a request for more AEW programming. This reality show that they're going to be doing, or they are doing, after Dynamite, is a request. Obviously, you want more content. You want your viewership to stick around. If you could get 300, 400,000 people to stick around, 500,000 people to stick around from 10 to 11, that, that's an astronomical number to do. And Warner knows this, and AEW knows the importance of this, and they know the brand synergy is important for them especially in a year that they're signing a new TV deal. So, it seems like there's an opportunity for them to do another wrestling show on a Turner property. I don't know if it's Ring of Honor. I don't know for sure if it's that collision trademark that they took out. Um, my producer can remember who reported. Was it? I forgot who it was, actually. I forgot who reported, but uh, I'll give you guys credit in the next segment for it. But... There is an opportunity, and Tony Khan mentioned this a few weeks ago, that there, there is request, there is a demand for more AW programming and more wrestling to put the wrestlers in front of a live audience or, or a TV audience. They have such a deep roster at this point, and this is part of the issue. They have such a deep roster that you don't get to see presented on national television. Yeah, you have Dark Elevation, you have Dark, or, but who's really watching those shows that's creating content so you have a library you have content the value of having a deep library is very very important for your valuation as a company tony Khan buying ring of honor yeah i'm sure he wanted to do a live show i'm sure he wants to do the pay-per-views but the value of having a 20 year old asset with 20 years of content of you know nearly every major professional wrestler to be successful Seth Rollins, AJ Styles, Brian Danielson, CM Punk, Samoa. I mean, the list goes on and on. That is value to your company. That is value to your brand. And if they have an opportunity to do a one-hour show, let's say on a Saturday. Let's, I'm throwing, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know. I didn't ask, but it was kind of like winking a nod. You know, maybe what's another day that's, that could work for them. Yeah, man, why wouldn't you take it? So. I, 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 didn't, I didn't post this. Um, Wrestling Observer posted uh, on the front page. And I saw a lot of, and, I, and Sean Ross Sapp, a Fightful, and, and a couple other people posted it. But I saw, I saw some criticism. You know, do, does, nobody needs a fourth hour of programming. Yeah, you do. You do need a fourth hour of programming, especially for the talent. Especially if you want these guys to be in front of a live audience. Also, why would... And, and here's the other side, right? Why wouldn't you just add a second hour of Rampage? Because that is a terrible decision to make. If you could avoid doing that, you want to avoid doing that. 
Do you as a viewer, you as a fan, want another hour of wrestling on a Friday night? You want four hours of wrestling back-to-back on a Friday night? I don't. I get fatigued. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm getting old. I know I'm getting old. I feel it every day. That's why I sound like this. My bones are broken. I don't think a a second-hour rampage is a positive, especially for ad sales. You have to put that into consideration, marketing of it, ad sales. However, this is me being speculative. If you had a Saturday time slot at 6 o'clock, what kind of demo can you potentially grow that you can't do with a primetime show? Let's ask our producer, Matt. Matt, MG. Yes, sir. MG Geek. Yes, sir. Long time, long time viewer of my content, and now he works for me, which was the worst mistake I ever made. What kind of audience can you attract with a six o'clock time slot on a weekend? Maybe again, I'm not I'm being speculative with that time slot, right? Maybe a little, maybe not. You know, you figure it out. (laughs) I don't want to I don't want to I'm not I'm not 100 percent certain that's the time. So I'm not going to I'm not going to confirm it. But what can you reach that you can't at nine o'clock, eight o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock? Sports viewers. People like okay. that, people that are watching uh, sports, live sports. Sure. Um, there's the romantic, there's a, the romantic uh, wrestling time. fan. That, sure, that the has, romanticized time slot, uh, sure. Yeah, uh, there's that. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot more people that uh, watch it, um, watch stuff like that um, for like the sports. Like TBS does baseball and, sure. uh, you know, that. so there's stuff on during the day and maybe in the afternoon or maybe it's a lead in. But you're forgetting one event. important thing. Like. One important mm-hmm. thing, myself, everybody in my generation, mm-hmm. we didn't watch, we didn't have Monday Night Raw when we started watching wrestling. And when we did yeah. have Monday Night Raw, it was late. We had prime time. Yep. My dad would, my dad would, you know, wake me up so Kids. I could go watch wrestling with him. Kids, the one demo that, w, that WWE has a major advantage it with. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be a kid catered show, but you have way more of a reach, a way more of an opportunity to get in front of. Kids, a, I'm saying kids, but a younger demo, a much younger demo than you can at 8 Let's p.m. or 9 p.m. or 10 18, p.m. Right? No, 13, I'm going younger. 18, I'm going younger, dude. Going younger than that? Okay. I'm going younger. I'm going mm-hmm. 9, 10, 11, 12. And you can cater the product a little bit better for that. You know, Moxie's not going to bleed all over the place. No, not going to Moxie. I'm, 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 I, I just, I absolutely love him. I, I'm just using that as an example. But... You have an opportunity. And what does that translate to? Merchandise, different ad possibilities. Weekend advertising is different. Uh, You know, you have your toys. You have your video game coming out. These are all things that you need to strategize. This is how, this. listen, this is my business. This is what I do. I think it's a brilliant move. Totally different time slot. Totally different demo. Totally different audience. On a weekend, you don't have to do a million viewers. But you know what? 350,000, 400, 500,000 could be a very profitable thing for you. 